This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Ramika Vincent Leary and welcome to this edition of In Studio. In the 1920s, President Calvin Coolidge established Child Health Day, which is observed the first Monday in October. Early on, the goal was to promote healthy eating and exercise habits for youngsters across America. Sadly, in the 21st century, we still have a long way to go. Now, some might argue Child Health Day should be every day. Coming up, we'll see what one local agency and two school districts are doing to encourage youngsters to exercise, put down those cookies, and grab an apple instead. Welcome back everyone. Healthy diet and exercise should be explored early in every child's life. This also impacts women who want to become mothers before, during, and after their pregnancies. The early formative years for children are crucial, such a serious issue that should never be ignored. To discuss this further, we're glad to have Teresa Camille, Executive Director of the Escambia County Healthy Start Coalition, and Dr. Teresa Mahaffey with Sacred Heart Pediatrics. Welcome, ladies, and I have two Teresas on the set. <laughs> How yes. good is that? Right? Yeah, it's a double, double whammy. Double whammy. Double dose of goodness. Absolutely. All right, Ms. Camille, let's talk about your organization. Can you give us a little bit of background? Sure. Uh, the Healthy Start program uh, was founded actually in 1991 under uh, legislation from Governor Lawton Childs. So we've been around quite some time, uh, and it was in response to uh, the high infant mortality rate across the state of Florida. Uh, Governor Childs uh, felt that that was, uh, we had an infant mortality rate of 13, meant, meaning that the we had 13 wow. out of a thousand babies born that year had died before their first birthday. Uh, so in the response to that, he, he um, uh, asked every community to form a local coalition, which, which would be a nonprofit, right. to find out why that was happening in their communities, uh, devise plans, strategies, and interventions at the local level, understanding that Scambia County is very different than Hillsboro, than exactly. Miami. So um, that's what we did. And, and again, we've been around for about 24 years here locally, uh, working with uh, at-risk moms and okay. their families to get uh, moms healthy for their pregnancies and, and uh, improve developmental outcomes. All right, so from the womb to the age of three, yes. am I right? Right, right. Dr. Mahaffey, a lot of times when women are thinking about becoming pregnant, Tell us some of the things that they should really focus on, so important. Prior to getting pregnant, they should think about their own health, um, obviously, and by that I mean eating healthy, uh, exercising. Exercising is extremely important before and during the first few months of uh, pregnancy. Um, because it not only helps uh, the physical health, but it also helps the okay. mental health. Now, when you mention exercise, would we think of things such as maybe walking? Walking, even running. Okay. Sure. Yeah, you can still run in Absolutely. your early pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. Things that you would want to avoid as a pregnant mom, especially um, toward the later part of your pregnancy, um, bike riding, horseback riding, things that would really uh, increase your uh, risk for a fall or that type of, of serious injury. So uh, clearly you need to discuss um, your, you know, your exercise plan with your obstetrician or your midwife, your care provider who's taking care of you during your pregnancy. But definitely uh, we encourage moms to participate in an exercise um, uh, program for yes. sure. And eating healthy. I mean, you know, that whole, that, yeah. that myth of, oh, you're eating for two. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> you're eating healthy for okay. two. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Mahaffey, when my sister was pregnant some years ago, she had a craving for Chinese food, high yes. sodium levels. Let's yes. talk about sodium for a moment. Sodium should be definitely at a modicum, especially when you're pregnant, because it can increase the chances later in pregnancy for eclampsia or preeclampsia. Mm -hmm. So you want to watch out for that for sure. Yeah. And the risk of develop, uh, d developing preeclampsia, uh, chronic high, or you know, pregnancy-induced hypertension, which is, is the other term for that, um, and an early 
delivery, yes. a low birth weight baby um, it just increases exponentially. So if uh, and you, so if you do develop a, a, a disease during your pregnancy, another problem would be gestational di diabetes. So a woman comes into a pregnancy healthy, otherwise healthy, but because of her um, diet habits um, or her poor exercise habits, she develops these, um, these other issues, diabetes, hypertension, she's at greater risk for developing, for, for delivering okay. her baby early. All right, so Dr. Mahaffey, once the baby has been delivered, mm -hmm. the mother shouldn't put down that apple, right? Keep eating healthy. Right, keep eating healthy for sure. And it's really difficult when you're tired and you're sleep deprived and you've got a crying baby at night to think about eating healthy, but it's very important, particularly if you're breastfeeding. Now, I've heard stories of women that have said, oh, I only gained maybe 10 pounds during my pregnancy. Right. Is that healthy or does it depend on the woman? It depends on the woman. Depends on the woman? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, for example, I'm not a really good example, but uh, my last baby weighed 10 pounds and was very healthy. I gained 70 pounds and lost okay. it within you three months. You lost it. Mm -hmm. and, and really, I mean, so if you look at it, if you have a, a, a typical mom going into a typical pregnancy, um, average weight gain is expected to be right around 20 to 25 okay. pounds. That's normal. That's a tip, that's typical. Mm, that's I, I don't like okay. the word typical. normal. Typical. 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 Um, but it could go anywhere along that spectrum, depending on as, as the mother's health, um, what the mother's health status is as she enters that pregnancy, um, and you know she, she really okay. needs to go by the guidance of her physician if she's entering that pregnancy. Is, you know, extremely overweight, then there may be different guidelines for her. Now, this is not the time for her okay. to go on a diet at all, ever. Um, there should still be expected weight gain, but she needs to work very, very closely with her, with her um, obstetrician okay. or her midwife for that. We have a surprise for you viewers. I know this handsome little six-year-old who's a first grader at MB Cook Elementary School. His name is Rex. Such a delight. He's going to tell us about the Escambia County Health Department's 5210 initiative, and he also has a few surprises. Five cents for five fruits and vegetables, like every day, and two cents for two hours of screen time, one stands for um, one hour of physical activity, and uh, um, the um, zero stands for zero sugary drinks. All right. Now, Rex, I know that you're into t-ball, and you like a lot of sports, so tell us some of the things that you like to do outside of t-ball for recreation. Well, I like the well, I don't do t-ball much. Okay. I do mostly swimming, most, and basketball. And you're a member of the running club, too. Yes. I used to be in kindergarten. Now I'm in first grade. I haven't came up yet, but I'm still going to do it. Okay. Now, when it comes to eating, what are some of the healthy foods that you like to eat on a regular basis? Uh, salad, strawberries, zucchini, um... Doesn't he just make you melt, my ladies? Yes. Yeah. Well, I used to in kindergarten, but you know. <laughs> okay, I get it, I get it. Now. So, yeah. Ms. Camille, your organization assists so many ladies, and some of the items that you can assist them with are what? Well, uh, we actually do help facilitate um, access to uh, nutrition counseling services, specifically WIC, so that's the Women, Infants, and Children Nutrition Program. Um, it's currently housed at the, um, health, the, the health department on Fairfield Drive. Uh, we have another resource up in the northern end of the county uh, where we have the WIC services available for, for women there as well. Um, but we actually um, help coordinate their care with any of the needs that they have. So if they don't have a safe sleep environment okay. for their baby, we'll provide that for them. Them. Um, if they need access for housing, we can help with them um, get that as well. And I know that you also hold special events with the youngsters and produce, different right. things that they may select. Isn't it amazing, Teresa's, <laughs> to actually see a youngster grabbing a nutritious item such as we see right there. I right. see a banana and an orange cute little face there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was at our um, our, our uh, community-wide baby shower last May oh. uh, and we put that on every year. 
Um, and one of the big things that we do is that we call it education stations. So it's not just kind of a, a you know, a, a little fair. It's, it's where kids can come Precious. and see, you know, fruits, vegetables, see how they're prepared, um, get a chance to touch and hold and, and of course, eat them. Um, okay. So, yeah, we do that every year. It's lots of fun with all of our community partners. Now, as a pediatrician, Dr. Mahaffey, when the little ones come to see you, mm -hmm. do many talk about healthy eating habits or maybe even some exercise, too? Well, that, that kind of questioning is always with our well child exams, and so we ask about that. Okay. And it's uh, sort of disheartening because I would say only 3 to 4 percent of my patients um, eat a healthy diet. Wow, you would think that we would have higher percentages, right? Well, um, I think Dr. Mahaffey and I live in a world where that's a reality, so I, perhaps the you would like to think. Yes, you would like. That you would to. like to think, but the reality is that um, if if that was the if that was the case that the majority of people were having a healthy diet, we wouldn't have an obesity problem in our country. Right, which is worsening. So I, it, typically, I will get an, an answer when I ask about a three-year-old's diet that uh, usually includes the following: chicken nuggets, French fries, and Capri Suns. Sorry for the product. Placement. But uh, nothing green. No. No. Why is that? I would wonder. Um, it's uh, the norm. It's you know the, the, our diets have been normalized um, as much as we try to promote five fruits and vegetables yes. a day. Um, a billboard with those pictures on it doesn't doesn't integrate that into your daily lifestyle. So I may see a picture of say collard greens. Yes. Well, I'm eating my, I, I do eat five leafy vegetables. I eat it with, right. with bacon in it and uh, lots of salt. That's how I was told to cook it. So I cooked all the, and I cook it for three hours. So I cook all the nutrients, nutrients out of it right. and I added um, salt and fat to it. Ladies, it's been such a pleasure having both of you and Dr. Mahaffey, we'll see you a little bit later. <laughs> now, as we head to break, we'll hear more from Rex, a smart young boy with a bright future. Now, when it comes to junk food and trying to encourage others to make healthy choices, listen to his compassionate food for thought. Well, it could, you could have it like, a li you could have a little bit, um, you could have a little bit half a day. Sometimes I make my own dinner. Sometimes I make my own lunch. I've never ever made my own breakfast, but I'm sure I need to get to that. All right, so you motivate yourself. That's good. Now you are a big brother to your sister, Sally. What kind of advice would you give her growing up about the things that she should eat regarding her health and exercise. Well, right now, the only thing she would eat was a baba, and um, she should eat like baby food if she, when she's older baby, and when she grows up, she should eat like, like macaroni and... And maybe eat some healthy things with you when she gets older. Yeah. The American Graduate is proud to recognize a champion for education. Early Steps is a service for children birth to age three that if you have an inkling that your child might have any kind of developmental delay or if the doctor might say, you know, you might should get this checked out, Early Steps is a place to refer them for a comprehensive developmental evaluation. If a parent thinks their child is having a speech delay, is not walking on time, or is having some sensory issues, Issues. If you have concerns, it would be uh, good to contact us. And the great thing about it is if they qualify for the services, these services are provided to the family at no cost. We have lots of professionals in early steps, speech therapists, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and we work together as a team. Jace has Down syndrome, so they've been 
a total blessing to us and our family in getting us connected with the resources that we need for him in his development, as well as connecting us with other families to share and to go along the journey together. What we do with our services is going to maximize our child's development and minimize delays that may occur by the time that um, they're going to school. The biggest hope is to be able to get him ready for at least kindergarten so that he can have a good fighting chance with the other students so that he doesn't have the, the same developmental problems that he's having right now. But the successes that we see are phenomenal. A lot of times parents will be told, your child will never do this. They won't walk or they won't talk. Or, and, and they get very discouraged. Early Steps and the resources that it gives us gives Jace the best opportunity to thrive, whatever that may be, and to allow him to be what he is going to be. Small steps are huge steps for these kids. Can you You're pay cake? Duty. Yes, you are. Pay cake, pay cake. Early Steps, supporting families on the path to help children learn and develop to their full potential. For more stories of champions, visit americangraduate.org. Hello everyone, during this segment we'll focus our attention on the Escambia County School District and the creative things that are being done to foster healthy eating and regular exercise. From J.H. Workman Middle School we have Millie Sessions, an educator specializing in English speakers of other languages. She also oversees the vibrant sustainable garden. Plus, we have Leslie Kuyuch, the school's Language Acquisition Department Chair. Next, I'd like to introduce Cassandra Waller, a physical education and health and wellness specialist for the school district. And finally, this smart young man with a bright smile is Jorge Gomez, a student at Workman Middle School who also helps with the school's sustainable garden. I'd say we have several green thumbs on the set. Am I right, Millie? Absolutely. Our students at J.H. Workman excel when it comes to the gardening. Speaking of which, there's a beautiful basket right here. It looks scrumptious, by the way. I will not take a bite. But I know that you oversee the sustainable garden at Workman. Millie, so tell us more about that. This is a program that was started several years ago. I can't take credit for it. There were other people before us, before Leslie and myself. Okay. But um, in the last three years, we have revised it, we have revitalized it, and added components to it. It's not just a sustainable garden outside, but we also have an aquaponics system in the classroom, and we incorporated a hydroponics outside also. So can you differentiate between the two for our viewers? The aquaponics has um, the component of the fish. So what happens is the fish byproducts, and Jorge really wanted to say this, the fish okay. byproducts <laughs> come through piping that we have into the plant system and the roots take in this, the byproducts okay. and then they clean the water and it goes filtered back into the um, fish tank. That is amazing. Now, Jorge, you and I took a little walk about a week ago to the Sustainable Garden, and I must say you were pretty handy in the garden. Now, tell us a little bit about your history, because you moved from Guatemala, right? Yes, ma'am. And now you're at Workman, so tell me a little bit about that. Well, well when I was uh, young, uh, I like to eat like uh, a lot of junk food, you know, like chips and okay. all that. Okay, like we're being honest here, right? <laughs> and uh, when I was, and then uh, like when I was growing up, I was uh, a little bit and getting a little bit, you know, a little bit fat. So. Oh, okay, just and a then, little. And then uh, I was gonna use my brother's computer because uh, he sometimes doesn't like me to use it. But I was like, okay, I like to be like then kind of like guy that wants to sneak in. Okay. So then uh, I got in and I wanted to do some research about how to get, uh, how to do exercise and all that. Good. And then I was, uh, I was looking uh, about uh, uh, veg vegetables yes. and then I found uh, the carrots and it says that uh, something that really got me interesting about the carrots is that you can like 
tells you that you can look through the night and I was like oh I wanted to eyes. have that ability and uh, mm -hmm. in there I like to like superheroes and I wanted to be like a superhero <laughs> okay. so then uh, I started to eat uh, a lot of carrots and carrots is uh, the vegetable that I like to eat the most so. That's amazing. We have plenty of carrots right here. <laughs> now, sitting next to you, Cassandra, now, I know that, well, a little birdie told me that you were previously at MacArthur Elementary, and you had a heavy hand in their sustainable garden. Talk about that. Yes, I, I, I was the um, one who got the MacArthur Garden up and running. I have no clue how it came about. I was just <laughs> woke up one morning and thought, I think I want to start a garden. And so there was a designated area that was um, chained in because I guess it used to house some satellites and it wasn't being used for anything. So I thought this would be a prime area, it's fenced in. Reached out to some local entities such as uh, the University of Florida's Extension Office, uh, worked with some of our school community partners and then just loaded up some shovels and recruited a couple of parents and we started digging and uh, created some, some sustainable beds and we had it put on drip systems that was solar powered and it was all student-led. Uh, I wrote grants so that we could continue to get soil okay. to refurbish the nutrients and uh, get ourselves some seeds. And so, yeah. Now, amazingly, look up here at that screen. We see these youngsters here so proud, aren't they? Holding up the veggies. Uh, yeah, I'm very proud of this group too. They won a Jamba Juice grant, actually, really? mm -hmm, for all of the things that they did. And um, the carrots that you saw holding up as well, okay. that was about 20 pounds worth of carrots that was donated down to Mana Food Bank. And then I think there was another, oh, you see the heads of cabbage there as well. Right. Uh, I mean, these are just four by eight gardens. Okay. Four by eight, so it's a small garden. And uh, we have all kinds of things. We had squash and zucchini and, uh, broccoli and Brussels sprouts. I mean, the amount of Brussels sprouts that came out of a little garden just like this is just incredible. But it gave a lot of our students exposure to vegetables that they don't traditionally maybe have in the lunch line. Uh, our, our cafeteria, by the way, our school yes. food services does a phenomenal job of providing a lot of variety. But we're just trying to get these kids um, the fresh opportunity. Yes. And, and a lot of times when kids grow things themselves, they're more likely to try it. Mm -hmm. They are. Absolutely. Michelle Obama, First Lady, her Let's Move initiative really touts that. And the things that you have grown at Workman, Jorge, I know that you love carrots, but there are other things. I saw some collard greens out there. I saw some very hot peppers. So have you ever had a chance to maybe cook something that you've grown from the garden? Well, uh, not really, but uh, uh, I want to start cooking to okay. learn how to cook. All right, you might join the Culinary Academy. We'll hear more about that next time. But hey, like you said, Cassandra, you plant it nine times out of 10, you will grow it. Right. Now, Leslie, let's talk about some funding issues at okay. Workman, for example, because Jamba Juice, that's awesome for MacArthur. But I know that we're trying to educate the public to eat healthy and exercise. So I want to give you a chance to talk about that. Okay. Guarding the funds. Well, probably about three years ago, I got really motivated about starting up the garden at Workman, and then Millie kind of took, you know, over as <laughs> the master gardener. Yes. But um, I got motivated because my daughter and her husband, they operate the Gulf Breeze Community Garden, and I was like, if they can garden, so we, so can we. Yes. So yeah. um, I started just tapping away at my computer, and we got the Lowe's grant, which was um, $2,000, and that really helped us to that's to get started. Remarkable. We have several raised beds that are four by eight also, and um, with uh, that particular startup grant, we've been able to um, donate over 150 pounds of produce to Mana Community Food Bank. And we also got the Target grant, and with that grant, we've been able to take uh, field trips to the cold water gardens to learn about mushroom farming, and vermiculture and uh, pollination, all types of different gardening strategies. and That is amazing. Now, Millie, from the students like Jorge and others, do you get special requests for things to grow in the garden? I'm just curious. We do. We had a, a large Asian community in our, in our school last year, and they always wanted something called bok choy. And I have to admit, I didn't know what it was, but we got the seeds and we started growing it. And then I said, wow, this is pretty good. This is something that we need to incorporate. So we do have that now. And like Jorge was saying, he hasn't cooked 
but we go out there and eat fresh produce yes. all the time. You know, the kids, we had stevia. Who knew that you could have a, ste a, a sugar leaf and the kids would just pluck it off and you can eat it just like that, fresh out of the car garden and things like that. Jorge, I see you right here with your, your friend at the school. Do you see that? <laughs> yes, ma'am. So have you recruited anyone to help in the garden, maybe influence somebody else? And I know you have a friend there, so you can start with one, and then we grow, right? Yes, ma'am. You told me a story about your childhood in Guatemala when I talked to you a short time ago. What was located right next door to your house? Remember you told me there was a store? Talk oh. a little bit about that. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, when I was in Guatemala, it was uh, my, uh, it was like brand new. Some uh, people just came and uh, wanted to make, start a, a uh, store. Okay. They were making, you know, tortillas. Yes. They make tortillas. So they wanted to make a store too. And they were putting a lot of uh, junk food and uh, all of that kind of stuff and uh, some sodas and everything. And then that time I, uh, I was like uh, saving my money too, and uh, I wanted to uh, keep eating a lot of that stuff. And so then uh, I just have to go down, then just turn left and just go in. And you mentioned it was buy. pretty close to your house. There was a door, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, a little close for comfort. Absolutely. Now, Cassandra, from a physical fitness aspect, working in the garden is a great form of exercise. Would you like to talk about a few other forms? Yeah, my back would definitely say that working in the garden is, is a lot of work, um, especially for the kids. They're in there and they're, they're digging and um, they're, they're planting things and they're moving soil. Uh, but other things uh, that you're referring yes. to that, that we can do in the community, I mean, kids that are really young, all the way up until their adulthood, they can ride bikes, they can go for walks through their neighborhood, they can go swimming. Um, our city of Pensacola has got a lot of opportunities. They got yes. a lot of parks. We've got beautiful community maritime park now, uh, the Palo so Fox Pier. A lot of places <laughs> that they could go. But even if you can't get out of your house or out of your yard, there's a lot of simple exercises that kids can do. Push-ups, jumping jacks, sit-ups. Um, uh, there's a lot of calisthenics and a lot of people have phones nowadays and there's tons of free apps that kids can put on their phone that uh, safe of course parent uh, kids safe. always kid always friendly. check with your, your parents <laughs> first and uh, make sure that it's okay to download but they'll configure a special workout for the kids so there's a pl there's a lot of opportunities that kids can get involved in to stay healthy not just at school or if they're involved in an extracurricular sports team but while they're at home that is some excellent advice. You do any of those? I know you're soaking all that in, Jorge, right? <laughs> yes, what do you like to do for exercise, besides working in the garden, that is? Uh, well, when I'm in, ha in my house, well, I like to, like, when I get in my house, I have a, my parents bought me a basketball, and I wanted to join the team in basketball. Well, it was the first time I played basketball, so I couldn't get in the team, so I started practicing uh, with the ball every time I come to my house. That is awesome. You are so motivational. I know a lot of people are watching and they're going to do some awesome things because of all of you. I know that is certain. It's been such a pleasure having all of you this segment. Awesome meeting you too, Jorge. All right. Folks, as we head to break, if you haven't eaten yet, our next segment will make you crave all things healthy and scrumptious. Don't touch that dial. We'll be back after this. American Graduate is proud to recognize a champion for education. Pensacola not only has the opportunity, but the responsibility to become America's first early learning city. Right now, we have about 3,000 children who come to kindergarten in Escambia County every year, and about 1,000 of them aren't ready. We realize if we're going to make an impact in the community education, we would have to start when the kids are young, and we realize that kindergarten readiness was so, so important. The Studer Community Institute is very focused in the, in the birth to five space and what we found was that the path to explain all of our our issues with high school graduation with eighth grade reading with third grade math with first grade retention all start really before a child ever gets to school and what that would mean would be that 
not only do great preschools and child care centers embrace the power of uh, language to build brain development, but all the aspects of our community understand the power that there is in language to build a young child's brain. And they embrace that and they see their part in it and we want to help them do that. And those kids, when they're ready for kindergarten, they'll be good readers at third grade. And if they're on task and reading at grade level at third grade, they're much more likely to graduate on time and pursue whatever higher education goals they might have. So if we can just do one thing in this community, to make it a different, to make it better. It's making sure those children, from the day they're born, or even before they're born, the parents and everybody in the community says, we want this child to maximize their brain development and they're ready for kindergarten. Because why? Because every child deserves the best chance to be successful. The Studer Community Institute, helping children in our community find the path to success in school and in life. For more stories of champions, visit americangraduate.org. We're back and ready to explore every detail of the Workman Middle School Culinary Academy. During this segment, I'm happy to welcome back Cassandra Waller, physical education and health and wellness specialist for the district. We also have Lisa Bloodworth, Culinary Academy teacher at Workman Middle School, including one of her prized students, Kendall Frazee. So ladies, are you ready to roll up your sleeves and rustle up some awesome culinary ideas that will get the youngsters in the kitchen? Yes. Someone's yes. already done some work here, so let's take a look at what we're looking at <laughs> here. <laughs> Lisa, okay, give us the rundown, both plates. Okay. Uh, the challenge was for my students, these are Culinary two students, so they had me last year to learn the basics, and the challenge was we were talking about presenting and plating. And so I went over the basics of plating, and it was a grilled cheese challenge. All I said was, you're going to make something with grilled cheese. And I left it open to them to choose all the ingredients, yes. any side dishes, anything they want to do. And these were my top two winners today. So grilled cheese and that's tomato soup, right? That is tomato soup. Okay. They called this one a grilled teeny. Ooh. They said <laughs> <laughs> they have tomato soup uh, with a bacon and cheese garnish on top and the grilled cheese sandwich and the jalapeno fit on the side. And the other one is the salami and the pepper jack cheese okay. grilled cheese sandwich with a slight bit of sauce on the side. You are making me so hungry. <laughs> so Kendall, did you prepare any of these dishes? I prepared the salami and pepper jack grilled cheese. Folks, if you were here on set, you would be able to smell the aroma <laughs> and it is magnificent. So Kendall, what inspired you to join the Culinary Academy? Well, my dad, he's always been in the food industry, and I never learned how to cook. And so I was looking through my options for my electives, and I saw that culinary was one of them, and I figured, why not give it a shot? Now, you and I had a little chit-chat a short time ago. You really weren't into cooking, as you mentioned. Your dad is a chef, so that could have also inspired <laughs> you as well. Do you have a favorite item that you like to prepare? Not particularly, but I do like to bake a lot. A lot. A lot meaning every week or? Just meaning when I bake, I really get into it. Like I, I do everything from scratch. I want to cool. do it, build it my way. 
your way. I like just like you. Bring it this sandwich here. So Cassandra. You almost, you almost caught me trying to take a bite. <laughs> well, I have to slap your wrist. I haven't no, had I'm dinner yet. <laughs> I promise I won't. So Cassandra, sometimes people can eat in excess, right? So oh, absolutely. Instead of one slice of cake, some people might say half a cake, but really that's going a little far. I feel like you're telling on me here. <laughs> telling my secrets. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you just don't realize how much you've eaten. So like, for example, take a bag of chips. Everybody just quickly wants to grab that bag of yes. chips rather than look at the bag and count how many chips or grab a, grab the amount of the, that's the portion size and put it in a, on a napkin or in a bowl or something. So next thing you know, you got this bag of chips that's got 15 <laughs> or 16 servings in it. And you realize, I've eaten a quarter of the bag. But here's another thing. They may try to justify it by saying, oh, it's half full of air, so really it's not a whole bag of chips. You yeah, I've heard that. Well, that's correct. I mean, the bag may not be half, you know, it may be half <laughs> empty, but you still have X amount of portions in there. And, and so what a lot of people don't realize is, let's, let's take a common bag of chips. We're talking maybe nine or ten chips. Nine or ten chips, and people yes. think that's not enough to, to fill me up or give me an adequate snack, and so they, they keep eating. But those are also empty calories, so it's very important to make sure that you're looking at the nutrition label, pulling out that amount, and putting it on the napkin so that you don't get carried away. That's true. Others can try and entice you to get carried away, right, Kendall? Yes. You ever run into a circumstance like that, personally? Talk about it. Um, I actually had a friend, and she brought a bag of cookies to school one day, and we turned the bag over. There was only like four servings in the bag, which doesn't seem like that much, and we were splitting it, so it really, it was more than you should have eaten, but it wasn't so over the top, but we actually flipped it over and looked at the calorie count, and we were disgusted with ourselves. Afterthought, aftershock. <laughs> so Lisa, back to you as an instructor, and I commend you. You sent us some amazing pictures of your students in the kitchen. And as I viewed those pictures, I was getting hungry. So tell us some of the things that your students prepare in class. Well, I try not to do the same thing every year. I, I actually don't try not to. I just get bored with the same thing every year. So okay. we change it up all the time. Um, the first year we learn a lot of the basics. Uh, we don't do a lot maybe from scratch, so to speak, because we're learning measurements and stuff like that. Second year, one of the big things coming up, we're making gingerbread houses so we can enter a contest. Ooh. So we, they learn, they make their gingerbread from scratch. They actually roll it out, they design their houses, they put them together. Um, after that, we will go into, um, just it varies what we do. We've done what's for dinner tonight. Okay, that right there is a what's for dinner tonight segment. So what is for dinner tonight? That one was <laughs> empanadas. Um, we also had salad because rice. we wanted rice, red bean, uh, black beans, and yellow rice. Mm, that sounds good. We were teaching, I'm trying to teach them timing, I'm trying to teach them presentation, and a healthy meal, well-rounded meal. Yes. I want them to be able to understand that they can go home with a few simple ingredients and they can create something special out of it. Here, they're rolling the empanadas and they're helping me to uh, finish them off. And that's them filling them and the bag of salad sitting there. That was the other thing I was teaching them was, sometimes you get home from school, we don't get out until four o'clock, you're tired, you don't, last thing you want to do, I know last thing I want to do sometimes is go home and make dinner for okay. my family. Let's be honest, right? Let's uh, be honest about this. So there is such thing semi-homemade, you do some things from scratch and you do some things the easy way, maybe a bag salad or something like that, but I want to teach them something from every food group. That is awesome. So many smiles on the faces of those students, I <laughs> noticed that. I know they love you, don't they? <laughs> now, Kendall, have you actually recruited any students to join the Culinary Academy? Um, there were a couple that in sixth grade, they weren't in the Culinary Academy, and I was telling them how great it was and that it was something that they really should try, and by seventh grade, they were in culinary, so... All I guess right. they wanted to try Have it. you ever had a throwdown where you cook a little something, another student cooks something, and there's a judge? Lisa, have they ever done anything like that? <laughs> well, today was the perfect example. <laughs> okay, so this is a great we example. We actually had impartial judges come in because I cannot be impartial when it comes to I've sat there and watched them, and I'm right. impartial to all of them. But um, it's like picking a favorite child. So anyway, I we did, but they do more. Um, 
last year, they will do this later on. Uh, one year we did all vegetables, and they all okay. got to pick vegetables out of a hat, and they had to come up with a creative recipe. So I'm doing a lot more of putting the burden back on them, telling me that's good. maybe I give them a theme, and they tell me how they want to present it. I understand that you all have actually served some lunches and yeah. maybe catered a few events here or there. Talk, mm -hmm. a, talk a little bit about that. Yes, well, the eighth graders are usually the ones that do that. Okay. So we haven't participated much yet, but we will get there. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of luncheons for our school and even some for the county if they're held at our school. Um, we take our food places for competitions sometimes, and we just have a lot of fun while we do it. You can mm -hmm. take it to my house. Take, take the food to my house. I think Cassandra wants the gingerbread house. I think she's giving you a hint. <laughs> right. I'll measure out the portion, though, I promise. <laughs> it's like Christmas early. I'm just telling you that when it smells. Yes. You walk in. It is. Mm -hmm. Now, Cassandra, getting back to you, healthy eating, exercise, hand in hand, right? Absolutely. You have to have a healthy diet and exercise. One without the other is like putting on your left shoe but forgetting to put on your right shoe. Your walk is going to be kind of funny. I mean, wobbly. Yeah, but there's some people who think that because they work out really hard that they can go and they can just eat whatever. Well, what we see is what's on the outside of our body. We don't necessarily see what's on the inside of our that's body true. and that's our arteries and cholesterol gets in there and if all you're doing are lifting weights, yeah, you're cleaning out those arteries some, but it's not as much as it could be if you were eating healthy and had those healthy you know, blood cells running, rushing through, and in addition to some cardiovascular exercise. Um, so I always try to teach my students, and, and physical education teachers yes. continue to teach their students that it's not how you look on the outside, it's about how you take care of everything, including what's inside, your heart as well. So that means you cannot eat that entire gingerbread house in one no, day. No. Am I right, Kendall? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so has, has your dad influenced you in any way? I understand he's a chef. Um, he does. He cooks, like, every night. And it's always something different. He does cook very healthy. And so I watch what he does, and I try out some of the recipes that he tries. So that Amazing. Kind of Lisa, are they graded when they actually cater events and cook for others? They are graded, but um, more or less the success. Um, I do safe staff tests, which is a restaurant certification. And um, I have the serve safe level. And what I do is I safe staff test my students, which is a whole restaurant man okay. um, certification. It's all about safety, sanitation, everything they need to know about um, how to not only keep themselves safe, but keep other people they're serving safe. And we don't get foodborne illnesses, we hope. <laughs> it's been such a pleasure interacting with all of you. Thank you so very much. All right, folks, when we come back, you'll meet a courageous Santa Rosa County High School student with a motivational story. And it'll definitely make you think twice about choosing an unhealthy lifestyle. Stay with us, folks. Tyler stories coming up next. WSRE Public Television and the Escambia Elementary Principals Association congratulate these Shining Star Award recipients. These students were selected upon the basis of good citizenship and adherence to the core values adopted by the Escambia County School System. Equality, responsibility, integrity, respect, honesty, and patriotism. Congratulations to all of these outstanding students. The last time you needed to know, there wasn't this or this. When the last hurricane hit our state, we were there. And today, we're still here. But we're also here. Introducing Florida Storms, a free mobile app from the Florida Public Radio Emergency Network, built just for Florida. With content from the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, Florida Storms will alert you to any weather hazard that may threaten you or your family. Florida Storms, download it today. Unlock your newest member benefit. Over 1,000 episodes of your favorite PBS shows. American Masters. Antiques Roadshow. Nature. Nova. Masterpiece. Watch the best of PBS 
anytime, anywhere. Become a member, sign in, and start streaming today. We are so glad to have Dr. Teresa Mahaffey with Sacred Heart Pediatrics back for this segment. Plus, I'd like to introduce my next two guests from the Santa Rosa County High School District. Rick Hardcastle is the coordinator of assessment for the district and a proud foster parent. Now, the handsome young man beside him is his foster son, Tyler. How are all of you doing? Good. Great. Good. All right, Tyler. Milton High School. What grade are you in? I'm a freshman this year. How so. do you like that high school experience? It's good so far. It yeah. is. Hard but rewarding. Hard but rewarding. Okay. Tyler, you have a remarkable story. When you were first introduced to Rick and he became your, your foster dad, what happened before then regarding your weight? My weight? Um, with my weight, I was... Uh, 184 pounds. I was very, I didn't, I wasn't very active, and I ate a lot of junk food and everything like that. What are some of the things you would eat? Just tell us. Uh, chips, sodas, uh, a lot, like a lot of sweet tea, a lot of it, pizza, stuff like that. Now, when you say a lot, pretty much every day. Yeah, pretty right. much. <laughs> so you probably never saw a salad often, am I right? Not really. <laughs> All right, so Rick, let's talk about your influence. I understand that you like to run, but you also work with the school district. Give us a little bit about your background and what you do for Santa Rosa County. Well, I'm the coordinator of assessment, and I know that has nothing to do with eating or exercise or, or whatever, but um, I've always felt uh, very strongly that the kids that have been part of the school system should be introduced to healthy eating habits yes. and activities. So I've always been very supportive of physical education and the health and wellness initiatives that we provided to the students there. From a personal perspective, do you enjoy running? Absolutely. Are you a distance runner? Three or four runner? days a week. <laughs> Three or four days a week. Yeah. Mm. Tyler, I understand that you're also a distance runner, right? Yes, ma'am. How long have you been doing that? Uh, for a year now. All right. So how far do you actually run on any given day for practice? For practice, uh, 3.2 miles, so about an average 5K. Awesome. And how long does it take for you to do that? Um, it takes me about 34 minutes, but I'm trying to lower my time. That is amazing. <laughs> Dr. Mahaffey, please dispel this myth. Some say pediatrician. Oh, uh, well, is there a cutoff age, yay or nay? Well, it all depends on the pediatrician. But in my office, we see kids until they're 18. And if they go to college, I'll see them until they leave for college. All right. A lot of people would have thought otherwise, right? Right, right. I mean, there is a myth that you leave at 13 or 14, particularly if you're a male and have a female pediatrician. But actually, I like to carry on the relationship until they're in college. OK. Well, Tyler, let's go back to you. Your foster dad sent me some remarkable pictures of you. Mm. Some of the clothes that you wore back in the day before you and Rick became a family. So I know that you mentioned your weight previously, but how many sizes did you go down? Um, 
I went to, I went from a 48 to a 30. Oh, we see the, one of your pictures oh, up there, right? Yeah. 38, okay. sorry. And I'm almost a 28 now. From, okay. Also went from an extra large shirt to a medium. And we see um, another picture of you up there. Right. Absolutely. How much time did it take for you to lose that weight? Well, it took me to get to my current weight, yeah. so about a year. About a year? Yeah. Okay. And let's talk about some of the exercise. Would I maybe say that you ran a little bit, but were you doing other things? Um, I ran and also with uh, lifted weights. Sorry about that. Okay. And then um, sit-ups, push-ups, stuff like that when I had free time. And lifting weights, Dr. Mahaffey, let's talk about that. We know that not everyone can lift a specific amount of weight. We have to look mm -hmm. at our body type and size. Yes. Would you like to interject a few thoughts regarding that? What is safe for a youngster in that respect? Safe for a youngster would be uh, five to 10 pound weights for beginning. And uh, now we actually advocate that children as young as eight can start weightlifting in a healthy environment because uh, it's not only the cardiovascular exercise you need to do, it's also muscle training. So um, it, there used to be this uh, belief that you shouldn't lift weights too early, but now we go down as low as age eight. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Now I know, and you told me previously that you have some children and I, I know do. that they're healthy eaters, right? Yes, they are. Thanks to my husband, actually, he's the cook in the family. <laughs> okay. He's very healthy. Would you like to share any personal stories about maybe any of their journeys with health and yes, exercise? Yes, actually my oldest son uh, Patrick has autism and so his diet is very limited. But uh, again, thanks to my husband, he does eat a very healthy diet but within what he likes. And we also have a garden in the backyard and we have our own That's chickens. Good. So we have eggs and vegetables and you know a lot of good food in the home. All three of our kids were brought up eating very healthy. That is amazing. Now, for a child with autism, the, the exercise component, and you mentioned making sure that you have someone that's responsible, right? Right. To assist. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And that's a big problem in, the, um, in kids with special needs because a lot of times they're very sedentary, and so they don't get the exercise component at all. And many, many times they're rewarded with food, which only compounds mm -hmm. the problem. So there's a lot of weight gain. All right. So Tyler, how have you maintained your stature? And I am so proud of you. The motivation of Rick, I'm sure that's part of it. But is there anything else that has given you that drive to eat well and exercise? Um, another drive besides Rick, which he is manly it, <laughs> is I just wanted to be okay. a lot healthier than I was. I just wanted to be healthier. And so... If you were able to give advice to someone out there right now in TV land, around your age, that's a couch potato, maybe noshing on some chips right now as they view, what kind of advice would you give them to hopefully help them turn the tide or change this situation around in their life? What I would say is it might seem impossible to lose weight, but with given enough time, anything's possible. So... Just. And you're a prime example right there, as we see. Yeah. Okay. Now, we know, Rick, that Santa Rosa County has dedicated the entire month of October for child health and fitness. Are there any specific activities coming up that you may want to talk about, some, any things that are going on? We know that there is going to be a, a drive for a blood drive, one of the efforts that the school district will have. There is also an initiative to inspire people not to pick up a cigarette or, or smoke tobacco. So those are just right. a couple of things that I know of regarding the school district, but basically right. it's every day, right? Right, our school lunch program does an outstanding job of promoting healthy eating with, with our kids. And they it just amazes me at all the creative things that they come up with to, uh, uh, promote healthy food, healthy diets, and uh, activity. And Dr. Mahaffey, another thing that the Santa Rosa County School District is doing, a safe hand washing initiative. 
that's important, right, before you even prep any food. Oh, yeah, it's very important. It's important in my line of work. It's important in, whenever you're cooking, uh, particularly if you're dealing with any poultry or meat or anything like that. Now, we know that people tend to get sick. They cough and they, and they spread germs. But mm -hmm. if we don't wash our hands, explain the extreme dangers in that. Some people don't really take that seriously. Well, they should because there are people out there who don't have immune systems that aren't as good as, you know, the majority of people. And if you don't wash your hands after you've coughed or... Uh, you know, prepared food with chicken or anything like that, um, you can introduce bacteria that are very dangerous to these people. Now, Rick, throughout all the schools in Santa Rosa County, the culinary classes are going to be stressing the importance of eating well. Now, do you sometimes maybe knock on the door and visit some of the culinary classes? You may not have time to do that, but I think it is good to know that the district is doing that during October. Yeah, I haven't personally made visits to the culinary classes. <laughs> uh, I've sampled lots of the things that they that they make from time to time. They provide uh, <laughs> snacks and treats at some of our administrative meetings. But uh, yeah, I know the good things are going on there Absolutely. at the culinary classes. Now I saw a bright smile appear on your face, Tyler. I don't know, maybe you took a trip, but, ser <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Are there any healthy foods that you just love? Do you have any favorites? Pineapple. I love pineapples and broccoli and carrots. So when you saw that basket on the table <laughs> during a previous segment. Yeah, I took a lot of willpower <laughs> not to go up there and sneak one out real quick. I'm sure it did. So will you be a member of the distance team throughout your entire high school journey? I will definitely be a part of it. All right. right. And have you influenced any other people to join the team? The No, I haven't, but I know a lot of people. I've been suggesting it to other people that they should join it if uh, next year. That is so amazing. I want to thank all of you for joining me. I am just joyful right now. It's been such a pleasure. And good luck to you in all of your endeavors. All right. Folks, now, as we close the show, the Santa Rosa County School District wants you to know more about its Child Health Day events scheduled for the entire month of October. For specific details, call Sherry Smith, Director of Student Services, at the following number, 850-983-5052. Again, that's 850-983-5052. And meanwhile, I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us. Coming up next time on In Studio, we'll discuss the Florida Guardian Ad Litem program and what you can do to impact young lives for the better. I'm Ramika Vincent Leary. Have a good evening and remember to keep it locked in right here on WSRE PBS for the Gulf Coast.